Why did I start filming my own hunts? Maybe a little different than, than some people. Um, I feel like a lot of guys do that just for fun to start, um, just to have their footage and, and stuff like that. I, I don't know, I guess uh, Samantha and I kind of had to grow up pretty fast because I didn't go to college. I went straight into shooting tournaments and you know when we got married we had house payments and tons of bills at a very young age and all that relied on me winning tournaments from one week to the next, I had to win to pay my house payment. And that was just so much pressure, I didn't want to live that way. Um, I didn't want to put my family through that kind of stress all my life, so um, I had a crazy dream of we were gonna start a hunting show and take the support I had from competition side of the world and, and try to build a career in the hunting industry, uh, which was crazy that I thought that would take uh, stress off my life back then. <laughs> but. Um, anyway, we lost money for a couple years and then it started growing and, and uh, kind of dreams came true there. And, uh, but that's kind of why I started in the beginning because I wanted a more steady source of income, something that didn't rely so much on me winning week to week uh, so that I was able to pay my bills. Um, maybe a little different than some people, but uh, that's kind of why I started filming my hunts and I love it now. Now I do it for fun, really. It's kind of weird how that... It's backwards. I, I, I would hate to go to the woods without a camera now. If I could only watch one of my hunts for the rest of my life, that's tough. I've had so many incredible experiences the last, you know, 10 years filming hunts. I, I would have to say probably my drop time buck from our family farm in Ohio just because I don't think I've ever been that excited over uh, taking an animal in my life because it had four drop times, I didn't know how big it was, didn't know the deer was alive, never seen it before, never had a picture of it. So just all that emotion, thinking it was gonna get away. Um, just a deer of a lifetime, I'll never kill a deer like that again, probably just, just so unique. Um, and it never gets old watching that because I can remember how I felt. Uh, when I seen him fall, uh, makes me smile just thinking about it. But yeah, that'd probably be the one I'd want to watch for the rest of my life if I had to choose one. If I had one piece of advice to give uh, new filmers, um, I think it's going to be communication, uh, especially being in a tree. Um, that's something we struggle with for years starting out is I was just a redneck that liked to kill stuff and I wouldn't ask. And so I needed a, a camera guy behind me that would tell me no, it would call me off. And my problem was that all the guys I had filmed me at that point were rednecks just like me, so they wouldn't say anything. But <laughs> we've kind of learned and evolved over the years to really try to communicate in a tree and as hard as it is sometimes to call somebody off, um, you gotta remember why you're doing this, you know, um, and that is to get everything laid down as professional as, as possible. So, um, yeah, I would say communication, um, and that's not very technical, but it's a huge important piece of putting a good production together, is being able to communicate in the heat of the moment scenario. Uh, my favorite feature of the fourth era camera arms while there are several, I think my favorite one is just being able to put it on any tree, any angle, limb, just this little guy right here makes my life so much easier. You can literally put it on any, any angle, any limb, anywhere. It's small, light, easy to use. I can put bases everywhere, but that's what I like most is just not having to have the perfect limb to put a, a base on. You can put it on any limb. And, that little guy makes your life easy. <laughs>